question for you. I know Einstein Healthcare Network was pretty early in the game to automate patient records with its Cerner platform back in 2009, and you've also achieved HIMSS Analytics Stage 6 award. All in all, you've really been ahead in the health IT game. So if you could talk a little bit about what you have going on now, what are some of your big projects now? Sure. We, we did uh, have an early vision when we first uh, started on our project back in 2009 for a single patient record you know, and a single platform throughout all of our venues. And we do have uh, three acute care hospitals. We have a, a freestanding rehab facility, as well as all of our independent practice, our practices that are a part of our network off-site. So that vision early on was, was a, a fairly u a unique vision, but we, we could see what we needed to do was to have that single, so a patient has a single record no matter where they're seen within our network. Uh, so all of those things, uh, we started initially focused on our hospital sides, where we uh, implemented our electronic record in in our um, uh, initial hospitals and throughout our network and then in 2012 actually uh, partnered and opened a brand new community hospital with all of our electronic tools as well. At the same time we're working on the bringing up of our initially our primary care offices. So we have completed all of our uh, employed physician primary care offices throughout Philadelphia, Montgomery, and Bucks County. And we have uh, just begun in this year, uh, the big project for this year is working on our specialty practices. So we have brought up our cardiology practices, uh, rheumatology, and orthopedics, and we continue throughout all of our specialties in our physician office. So it's an exciting time. We're beginning to see those benefits of communication throughout our network. Uh, and so we're really uh, excited to keep this rollout going. At the same time, as you mentioned, we made our decision back in 2009, actually when we first committed to the project of an enterprise-wide clinical information system was even before meaningful use had been named, defined, and brought out. So we have uh, achieved our stage one meaningful use throughout our networks as well as uh, most of the, all the practices that are already up on the electronic record. And we're, we're continuing to advance our way through into meaningful use stage two as well. And, you know, going on to meaningful use, we've, we've talked to a lot of providers about stage two and how uh, a lot of them are just skipping stage two altogether, uh, citing very difficult requirements, one of them being the download and transmit piece. Um, what are your thoughts on stage two? Do you think it's too difficult? Are, are you hoping for a 90-day reporting period? What are your thoughts on that? It's a great question. We are marching ahead with doing what we need to do around meaningful use stage two. Stage two has a, a, those challenges around the patient engagement. I believe personally that getting our patients engaged in their care is critical, uh, although it is, it is challenging to ensure that they engage in our electronic record as well as all the other ones that they may participate. We are doing okay. Um, our view download transplant tool is actually built within our patient portal. And so our focus has really been to engage our patients in signing up for the portal and getting them to log in. Um, and, and we're continuing to monitor those metrics and move ahead. I think the other challenge that we're seeing is around the communication with other providers in our region. So we're all moving at the same kind of pace, and but finding partners to exchange uh, in the time manner. And and there are there are some certainly we've been able to test the exchange and move forward with being able to exchange with some subset of our partners in the region. Would you I, appreciate a ninety day report? I think it would be a, a tremendous benefit if we could uh, adjust. I think by by getting all of the things we needed to get our stage one and jumping straight into stage two, there's still work to be done. And we, while we have the year to achieve the level of metrics, it would be a tremendous uh, uh, advantage to have a ninety day reporting period in this first year. It would give us a chance to really solidify the foundation that we have. And I think uh, in, it would give us a little bit more time to put the, not have to put all the resources up front that we're going to need to do in order to achieve these for the entire 12 months. And I think those efforts and those resources could be better spent optimizing the tools we've put in to, for uh, better clinician uh, usage and adoption and just helping people use our systems better and not focus on just checking the box that we have to to meet the standard. Mm -hmm. That's really what we're hearing from a lot of the providers we speak to. And um, another thing we're hearing, and I wonder your perspective on this, is uh, stage two providers are saying that stage two is, is not doing so much for the clinical end. And as a CMIO, I, I was wondering what your perspective is on that. 
think there's a lot of uh, I, it's a it has been a very quick transformation, and I think we needed some incentive to get us to, even to where we are with our stage one. But getting to stage two does start uh, a, having our patient engagement as well as communicating within the environment. And I think when all the standards were set a number of years ago, uh, it certainly. Uh, for all intents seem to be the direction we need to do to c continue to exchange information. But I do think uh, we're, we've all recognized that we have significant work. We could optimize the tools we already have even before we go down the path of trying to exchange that information. There's a lot of work we could do to help our clinicians use the tools we have better. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it would be a better way for us to spend our resources now.